The year is 1991. Sega spent time coming up with a mascot to rival Mario. Many choices existed, including a Theodore Roosevelt type fat man who eventually became Dr. Robotnik. But one stood above the rest. He was hip, he was cool, he was fast, he was blue, da da dee da 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 dee da 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 dee da da da. It was Sonic the motherfucking hedge fucking fuck hog. And what a design that is. He looks great. So it was time to finally debut. Just not in his own game. Sonic actually appears in a game called Rad Mobile as a little air freshener before he even got his own game. Moving on from all this though, let's talk about the first game on the Genesis. He ain't no fool with that sonic speed, he just always cool. Sonic, Sonic, the hedgehog. No fool. Come on, just show me what you got. Going fast is cool, going slow is not. Sonic, 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 the hedgehog. No fool. Wild game, dude. Now, if you thought the story was just about a blue protagonist who needs to be an evil scientist, I don't blame you. But that's Mega Man, you dope. Sonic is a little more complex. Well... I, I'm not, okay, maybe not. But the manuals provide us with some more info. Starting with the Japanese manual. Now, I can't read Japanese, so I found a translation. From this translation, we see that Dr. Eggman is an evil genius who apparently has fought Sonic before. They happen to be on an island called South Island, and South Island holds powerful emeralds known as the Chaos Emerald. So what do these do? They are, quote, a super substance giving energy to all living things. And what does that mean exactly? Not sure, very vague. Furthermore, they can be applied to nuclear and laser weaponry as well as scientific techniques. Uh, so with that we can gather it can be used for vaguely science and weaponry things. According to the manual, the reason no one has these emeralds is because South Island is always moving. It never stays put geographically, so it can be difficult to find. So Eggman placed a fortress there and started turning all the animals on that island into robot machines for his bidding. He is in search of these Chaos Emeralds. Sonic heard Eggman was up to no good and shows up to South Island to stop Eggman and free the animals. There's one more important thing in the Japanese Sonic manual and it doesn't have to do with anything and I'm not sure why it's here. Don't just sit there and waste your precious time. When you want to do something, do it right away. Do it when you can. It's the only way to live without regrets. Powerful stuff that really has nothing to do with the game at all. Over in the US manual, let's see what that has to say. The first thing it goes into talking about is the mad scientist Dr. Ivo Robotnik. Now who the fuck is this? Well, it's Eggman. They changed his name and localization, but both Eggman and Robotnik are the same person. In this one, he's still turning animals into robots, but this time it doesn't mention South Island or Chaos Emerald. It also states, that Sonic has a spiked haircut, which I thought was just hedgehog quills, but I guess not. And that his power sneakers give him super speed. And I thought at first it was suggesting that the shoes give him speed, but there's actually a power up in the game called power sneakers that make you go faster. So I'm just going to choose to believe it's referring to that. Basically, the English version makes some pointless changes that I don't really like. And I'm going to say the Japanese one is the true lore least to me. The levels are filled with badniks, which are the robots Sonic must fight, and destroying them releases animals. The animals have names, but the only important ones to me are these birds called Flicky, and these are interesting because Flicky was a previous Sega game with these birds, and now they're here too, so that's cool. And a chicken called Cucky. This is important because the chicken is a cuck and must be endlessly ridiculed. Now we are still not ready for the game yet because there was also a one issue Sonic comic that apparently gives more backstory before the game. Sonic's planet is called Mobius and Robotnik has turned different animals into his robots called Badniks. I'm cool with all this but then the story loses me and I'm just gonna say I think these next parts are dumb and they aren't in my head canon. But they are there. A professor named Kintobor, which is Robotnik spelled backwards, was working on emeralds, which may or may not be the Chaos Emeralds, to try to trap all evil things inside them. When he ends up meeting a hedgehog named Sonic that is not blue, and I hate the design, they become friends and one day Sonic runs on a treadmill at 685 miles an hour, which breaks the treadmill, and in the explosion, he turns into the blue Sonic we know. His shoes are also ruined, so Kintobor gives him new shoes. 
I hate all of this so far. It's so stupid. Make it stop. But one day, Kinto Boar wants a snack and tells Sonic to bring him a hard-boiled egg and a soda. The soda spills on the machine that is supposed to be able to harness evil and instead combines Kinto Boar with the hard-boiled egg and evil. Fucking creating Dr. Robotnik. This is the stupid shit. I hate it. Sonic then runs through various stages of the game and saves a pig guy who has nothing to do with the game and is named Porker Lewis. The comic ends with a bad egg pun and then telling you to go ahead and jump into the game. So yeah, let's do that. Let's actually talk about the game. It's bad enough that Sega Genesis has the most 16-bit games, but this new Sonic the Hedgehog, oh, he really duffed my doilies. They say he's incredibly fast. Well, what's the hurry, mister? Hmm? And about his attitude. Smarty pants. Why can't it be more like that nice boy Mario? Oh! Yeah. Green Hill Zone is the first zone, and it's got sweet music, and it's built to make you go fast. It's been a top tier level for a reason, and so many games after this have opened with a Green Hill Zone. When you think Sonic level, this is always one of the top ones to come to your mind. Now Sonic 1 has three acts per zone, which in my opinion is too long, but I guess Sega felt the same way because they ditched that in later games. I'm also playing the Origins version, which means I have widescreen and the spin dash, but the original Genesis version did not have that. Special zones are bizarre and trippy, and you're bouncing about to collect the six Chaos Emeralds, which for some reason it's six and not seven, and there are two endings. There's the regular one, and the one with the emerald. I'll beat the game, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to get the emeralds, because I'm trying to actually enjoy the game. And the only difference is the animation that Eggman does. Instead of saying, try again, it's just him angry bouncing on the words, the end. Boss levels in Sonic are a mixed bag. Some are fine, others suck. And every zone ends with you opening a canister and freeing all the animals. Marble Zone then punishes you for going fast, which is stupid because the first set of levels wanted me to go fast, but this one's designed with waiting and precision jumping in mind, and I'm just not a big fan. Spring Yard Zone is kind of bizarre. It's throwing strange words at you like cope. What's that even supposed to mean? It also has a lot of bouncing and pinball-like mechanics, which is something we'll see in future games, as well as Sonic and Pinball, they just seem to go hand in hand. Overall, this zone is fine. Then we go to Labyrinth Zone, which is a water stage, and Sonic can't swim, but it does have a drowning mechanic, and you need air bubbles. And I hate this zone more than any other zone. It's slow, and it's shit, and it's never fun for a second, and it wants you to die so badly, and it's the only zone that really doesn't have, like, a boss fight either. You just kind of chase Eggman, and fuck this zone. Then we got Starlight Zone, and I dig the music here more than the last two stages, and on top of that, you can finally go fast again. Fucking finally. And as my favorite boss fight, even if it is broken and a bit easy, it's still a neat concept with these teeter-totter bombs. Probably my favorite stage in the game, and the boss music is also not bad. Something you will hear every time you fight a boss is this boss music. Last off is Scrap Brain Zone. This is the only one that looks different based on Axe. Act 1 has a very cool red looking factory world which fits into the Sonic vs Eggman as it starts off with Green Hill Zone is a grassy nature place and ends with the machinery and pollution of Eggman's base. Act 2 is frustrating as shit and I hate it, but it does continue an industrial look and I really like that. Act 3 is somehow a Labyrinth Zone clone and I hate that and it has no redeeming qualities. Fuck that. Finally, we got the final boss where Eggman pops down and you gotta hit him and he fires little energy balls at you. He ain't so bad. And then he runs away and you see all the animals are saved and that was Sonic 1. Overall, it isn't good, in my opinion, but it's also not bad. It is totally fine. Now, before we jump on to 1992, let me give a couple other quick mentions about a few things in 1991. Sonic also had a game on the Mega Drive and Game Gear. According to Sonic Origins, it's an 8-bit version of the Genesis game, but you can ignore that because that's a lie. It has similarities, but its layouts are totally different, and on top of that, the boss battles are not very good. It played fine, but honestly, th that just wasn't for me. Sonic also had a Japanese-exclusive Waku Waku Sonic 
patrol car in which you sit in a little patrol car and it's a children's arcade game. Obviously I've never played that, but it looks neat. Then there's Sonic Eraser, a Japan exclusive puzzle game that looks bad and sounds bad and they can keep it. I don't want it. And then there was Sonic Edusoft, a Sonic educational game. This game didn't even come out and was also released as a ROM to the public in 2007. What was up with platformers getting educational games back then? At least the sprites look good. Also, Sonic always spoke. I don't know why in Generations and Forces they make Sonic not speak. He was speaking back then. I just don't know what the hell he was saying. Mega Drive, they're waiting for you. Sega!